This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture covers relative motion analysis acceleration. It's from chapter 16.7 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to resolve the acceleration of a point on a body into components of translation and rotation. And you will be able to determine the acceleration of a point on a body by using a relative acceleration analysis. Activities include some applications, We'll talk about the translation and rotation components of acceleration, relative acceleration analysis, roll without slip motion, and we'll do some problem solving. So in this mechanism for a window, this link AC rotates about a fixed point C, and AB undergoes general planar motion, right? Point A is moving in a circle about C, and point B is sliding in the track. So the link AB undergoes translation and rotation. How can we determine the accelerations of the links in the mechanism? In an automotive engine, the forces delivered to the crankshaft and the angular acceleration of the crankshaft depend on the speed and acceleration of the piston. How can we relate the accelerations of the piston, connection rod, and crankshaft to each other? Okay, so let's recall the relative velocity equation. The velocity of a point B on a body is equal to the velocity of a point A on a body plus the velocity of B with respect to A. We covered that earlier in this semester. Now I can differentiate this equation with respect to time. Now these two terms are the absolute accelerations of A and B and they're measured with respect to a fixed axis. This term is the acceleration of B with respect to A, and it includes both tangential and normal components. So we can write the acceleration of B is equal to the acceleration of A plus the acceleration of B with respect to A in the normal direction plus the acceleration of B with respect to A in the tangential direction. So let's look at this graphically. Now this is very similar to what we did with relative velocity analysis. We're saying that this general planar motion of this link is undergoing both translation and rotation. We can equate that to a translation component and a rotation about the base point A. And that's where the normal and tangential components of the acceleration come in. Now the relative acceleration component of B with respect to A in the tangential direction is equal to alpha cross R of B with respect to A and the component in the normal direction is equal to minus omega squared times R of B with respect to A. Now this one right here is not a cross product but it's in the direction of R of B with respect to A. So combining all of that, I can write that the acceleration of B is equal to the acceleration of A plus alpha cross R B with respect to A minus omega squared times R of B with respect to A. So this is the equation we'll use. In applying the relative acceleration equation you just saw, the two points used in the analysis A and B should generally be selected as points which have a known motion, such as pin connections with other bodies. In this mechanism you see here, point B is known to travel in a circular path about A, so the acceleration of B can be expressed in terms of its normal and tangential components. The normal acceleration of B will be omega squared R directed towards A, and the tangential acceleration of B will be alpha times the length of AB. Now note that point B is common to both lengths AB and BC, so the acceleration of B is the same on both lengths. Now point C, as you see here, it connects the length BC and the piston. It moves along a straight line path. Therefore, the acceleration of C is directed horizontally. So let's establish a procedure for analysis. First, establish the fixed coordinate system. Draw the kinetic diagram of the body. Indicate on it the acceleration of A, acceleration of B, omega, alpha, and R of B with respect to A. Those are all vectors. If the point A and B move along a curved path, then their acceleration should be indicated in terms of their tangential and normal components. 
apply the relative acceleration equation, which we just derived. Now, if the solution yields a negative answer for an unknown magnitude, this indicates that the sense of the direction of the vector is opposite to that that you assumed. Let's look at an example. Point A on rod AB has an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared and a velocity of 6 meters per second at the instant shown. Find the angular acceleration of the rod and the acceleration of B at this instant. So our plan is to follow the problem solving procedure you just saw. Now note that first we need to find the angular velocity of the rod at this instant and you can go back to the relative velocity equation to do this. Basically we'll locate the instantaneous center of rod AB and we can determine omega from that. Omega is the velocity of A divided by this length between R A with respect to IC. So omega is 2 radians per second. Now in this case both A and B move in straight lines therefore there's no normal tangential components of acceleration and we can write that the acceleration of A is minus 5j. Let me establish a coordinate system here. And the acceleration of B. Now it's directed in the i direction but it's an unknown magnitude so I'll write this as a scalar times i. So let's apply our relative acceleration equation. Acceleration of B is equal to the acceleration of A plus alpha cross R of B with respect to A minus omega squared R of B with respect to A. So the acceleration of B, we know it's in the I direction, so we can write acceleration of B in the I. Note that this first A sub B, that's a scalar. It's the magnitude of the vector AB. That's equal to the acceleration of A, which we know is minus 5J, plus alpha, that's an unknown, it's in the K direction, cross R of B with respect to A. And so that will be 3i minus 4j. Now r of b with respect to a, you're on a looking at b, so it's in the fourth quadrant. So the j component is negative. Now minus omega squared times r of b with respect to a again. So we can do the cross product and the multiplication and come up with acceleration of b in the i direction is equal to minus 5j plus 4 alpha in the i plus 3 alpha in the j minus 12i minus 16j. So this is the result of the cross product alpha cross r as a b with respect to a and the omega squared term times r b with respect to a. So we can equate the I components. Acceleration of B is equal to 4 alpha minus 12. So this is these I components. J components yield 0 is equal to 11 plus 3 alpha. So from this you can get that alpha is equal to minus 3.67 radians per second. So it came out negative and we assumed alpha was positive uh, counterclockwise. So that means that alpha is clockwise. And substituting that alpha into this equation right here, we get that the acceleration of B is equal to minus 26.7 meters per second squared. And it's negative and we assumed it positive to the right, so that means acceleration of B is directed to the left. Now let's consider bodies in contact, like these two gears you see here. They contact each other without slipping, so the points in contact move along different paths. And you can see that broken up here. There's this point A and this point A prime. So we can say that the acceleration of A, the tangential component, is equal to the acceleration of A prime, the tangential component. So that implies that alpha of b times the radius of b is equal to alpha of c times the radius of c. Now since these gears rotate with different angular velocities and have different radiuses, 
the normal accelerations are not the same. So in general, the acceleration of A is not equal to the acceleration of A prime. Another common type of problem encountered in dynamics involves rolling motion without slip. For example, a ball, a cylinder, or a disc rolls without slipping. The situation can be analyzed using relative velocity and acceleration equations. So as the cylinder rolls, this point G moves along a straight line. If omega and alpha are known, the relative velocity and acceleration equations can be applied to the point A at the instant A is in contact with the ground. Now you may remember that A is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. However, it is not a point of zero acceleration. So let's look at the velocity first. Since no slip occurs, the velocity at A is equal to zero. So we can write that the velocity of G is equal to the velocity of A plus omega cross R of G with respect to A. Now the velocity of A we just said is zero. So the velocity of G is equal to omega cross r of g with respect to a. And that makes sense. The velocity of g is the radius of the wheel disc cylinder times its angular velocity. Now for the acceleration, since g moves along a straight line path, the acceleration of g is horizontal. Just before a touches the ground, its velocity is directed downward and just after contact, its velocity is directed upwards. Thus, point A accelerates upward as it leaves the ground. So we can write acceleration of G is equal to the acceleration of A plus alpha cross R of G with respect to A minus omega squared R of G with respect to A. So let's apply what we know. We know that the acceleration of g is horizontal, so that's in the i direction. We just determined the acceleration of a is in the j direction. Plus, now alpha is, we're assuming it's clockwise, so it's minus alpha's in the k direction. Cross, now r of g with respect to a, I'm on a looking at g, so it's positive j direction minus omega squared times r in the j direction. So we do the cross product and collect i and j terms, and we come up with the acceleration of g is equal to alpha times r, and the acceleration of a is equal to omega squared r. And we can write these as vectors like this. So here we have a gear with a center at point O and it rolls along a fixed rack. Find the acceleration of point A at this instant. Our plan is to follow the solution procedure outlined earlier. Now since the gear rolls on the fixed rack without slip, the acceleration of point O is directed towards the right with a magnitude of alpha r, which you see here. So acceleration of O is 1.8 meters per second squared and that's directed towards the right. So here you see our coordinate system. So let's apply the relative acceleration equation between points O and A. So the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of O plus alpha cross R of A with respect to O minus omega squared times R of A with respect to O. So the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of O, which we know is 1.8 in the I direction, plus alpha. Now alpha is clockwise, six radians per second. So as a vector, it's minus 6K. Cross of R of A with respect to O, so that would be 0.3 in the J direction. Minus omega squared, omega was given as 12, times, again, R of A with respect to O is 0.3J. So this equals 3.6I minus 43.2J.
meters per second squared. So here's another problem. The disk is rotating with the angular velocity of 8 radians per second and an angular acceleration of 16 radians per second at the instant shown. Find the velocity and acceleration of this collar at A. So our plan is to follow the solution procedure outlined earlier. And we will note that point B, right here, is rotating about the fixed center here. So what components of acceleration will B experience? Well, since it's rotating, it will have normal and tangential components of acceleration. So again, since point B is rotating, we can write down its velocity and acceleration. I'm going to write down the scalar com components first. So the velocity of B is equal to omega times the radius of B. So our omega was given as 8 radians per second, and the radius from the center rotation to the point B is 0.15 meters. So the velocity of B is 1.2 meters per second. And we can see its direction here. It's directed along the length AB. Uh, we can write down the tangential component of the acceleration of B as alpha times RB. Alpha was given as 16 radians per second squared and the radius to point B is 0.15 meters. So this equals 2.4 meters per second squared. And it too is directed along the link AB. Now the normal component of the acceleration of B is equal to omega squared R sub B, which is 8 squared times 0.15. And that equals 9.6 meters per second squared. So let's write these down as vectors now. Uh, we know that the velocity of B is directed along the link AB, which is at 60 degrees. So the velocity of B as a vector is equal to its magnitude times cosine of 60i plus sine 60j meters per second. So that equals 0 0.6 in the i plus 1.039 in the j meters per second. And the acceleration of b is equal to now its tangential component we just found was 2.4 meters per second squared and the tangential component is also directed along the link AB. So that's times cosine of 60 in the I plus sine 60 in the J. Plus its normal component, which we just found was 9.6 meters per second squared. And it's directed towards the center O. So it's in the fourth quadrant at this angle of 30 degrees. So it's cosine of 30 in the i minus sine 30 in the j. So that comes out to be 9.514 in the i minus 2.722 in the j meters per second squared. So now we know the velocity and acceleration of this point B and we're interested in point A so we can write the velocity and acceleration equations between those two points. So let's do that. Let's start with the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B plus the angular velocity of link AB cross with the position vector R of A with respect to B. So if you look here again, the velocity of A is in the I direction. It's moving in a straight line. So we can say velocity of A in the I it's equal to the velocity of B, which we just determined to be 0.6i plus 1.039j plus angular velocity of link AB, which is in the k direction, cross R of A with respect to B. So that's a uh, half a meter long, and it's in the first quadrant at angle 60 degrees, so 0 0.5 cosine 60i plus sine 60j. 
So I'll leave it to you to do the cross product and collect I and J terms, but in the I direction, we get that the velocity of A is equal to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.433 times angular velocity of link AB. And in the J direction, we get zero is equal to 1.039 plus 0 0.25 times omega of the link AB. So from this equation, we get the angular velocity of link AB is equal to minus 4.156 radians per second. So since it came out negative and we assumed it positive counterclockwise, that means that omega AB is clockwise. And then we can substitute that omega into this equation and get the velocity of A is equal to 2.4 meters per second. It came out positive, so it is moving towards the right. So now let's apply the relative acceleration equation between points A and B. So let's write down our equation, the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B plus the angular acceleration of link AB cross with the position vector r of a with respect to b minus omega ab squared times position vector r of a with respect to b. So again, we look here and we can see that a is moving in a straight line, so therefore its acceleration is in the i direction. Acceleration of b we just determined was 9.514 i minus 2.722j plus, now alpha of AB, we're looking for that, but it's in the K direction, cross with R of A with respect to B. So I'm on B looking at A, so I'm in the first quadrant. It's got a length of half a meter and it's at 60 degrees. So that would be 0 0.5 cosine 60i plus sine 60j. And the last term is minus omega AB squared, which we just determined was minus 4.156 radians per second. Square that and multiply it by the position vector 0 0.5 cosine 60i plus sine 60j. Now I'll leave it to you to do this cross product and collect i and j terms. But when you do that in the i direction, we get that the acceleration of A is equal to 5.196 minus 0 0.433 angle acceleration of link AB. And in the J direction, we get 0 is equal to minus 10.2 plus 0.25 times the angle acceleration of AB. So from this equation, we get the angle acceleration of AB is equal to 25.5 radians per second squared. So it came out positive, so it is counterclockwise. And from this equation, we can get that the acceleration of A is equal to minus 12.5 meters per second squared. So it came out negative, so that means that the acceleration of A is directed towards the left. This concludes Chapter 16.7, Relative Motion Analysis, Acceleration. We're going to skip Chapter 16.8, Relative Motion Analysis Using Rotating Axes. Next up is Chapter 17, Planar Kinetics of a Rigid Body, Force and Acceleration.